Today we're going to be talking <clears throat> about our chapter 12 notes on page 3. <clears throat> so if you go to page 3, you'll see the formulas that we talked about yesterday. Up here, these, remember, are the reference sheet formulas that you don't have to memorize. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about angles that are variables, like A and B and X and Y instead of numbers like in the, the day before we talked about all of these angles being numbers like 60, 45 or 135 but now we're going to talk about them as variables and these two angles are going to be oftentimes in or sometimes in two different quadrants like quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 or maybe they're both going to be in the same quadrant you never know but they're not going to be drawn in the same triangle um, <clears throat> There's usually no specific mathematical relationship between the A and the B or the X and the Y or whatever the letters are that they're using. And what happens is you're going to be given one trig value of each of the two angles. Like in this first example, they're going to give you the sine of X, the first angle, and the cosine of the second angle. Or maybe they'll give us the sine of X and the cosine of X, or the sine of Y. They're going to give us some information about angle X and some other information about angle Y. And it's our job to find the missing trig values that we need to plug into these formulas. So um, we already know how to do that from the last chapter by Pythagorean theorem and SOHCAHTOA. So what we're going to do here, this first example, we have some given information here. We have the sine of X is 4 fifths. That's one port, important piece. We have the cosine of y is 4 fifths. Remember, these are two totally different angles, even though the sine of this is equal to the sine of that. They're just totally different angles. Now we have more information. x and y are both in the first quadrant. So here's given. Here's more given. And with those two pieces of given information, we're going to be asked to find the sine of x plus y. So our first step is to take what we want to find and we want to go up to the formula for sine of a plus b and just expand this out. So the sine of x plus y is what we want. Just go up here and it's equal to the sine of x times the cosine of y plus the cosine of x times the sine of y. Well, we need four pieces of information. These are four different numbers that we need to fill in. But right now, all we need, all we have is the sine of x being four fifths and the cosine of y being four fifths. So we have these two pieces, but what we don't have are these two pieces. We need to find these out. I'll put these in red. We need to compute these. Because these are given, these two pieces of information are given to us. These we don't know. So in order to compute these, we need to draw two triangles. One triangle is X, and they're both in the first quadrant. So here is triangle X. And the other one is called triangle Y in the first quadrant. So since we know the sine of X is 4 fifths, that's given to us. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And the missing side here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, well, this is just a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So this is, I'll put g for given. And we need to find, f for find, we need to find what the cosine of x is because we don't know it. But the cosine of x is just adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's equal to 3 fifths. So we figured that one out. I don't know if the g and the f are any good. That might be confusing later on. Okay, over here on angle y, they tell us the cosine of y is 4 fifths. Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the missing side here is 3. Well, we were given that the cosine of y is equal to 4 fifths. We didn't have to compute it. They told us right there. But now we have to figure out what is the sine of y. So we can plug it in here. Well, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 3 fifths. And now we have all four pieces of information to substitute. Now watch this and be careful. The sine of x 
is 4 over 5. It is not the sine of 4 fifths. It's just 4 fifths. The cosine of y is also 4 fifths. Whoops. Not the cosine of 4 fifths, just 4 fifths. Well, the cosine of x is 3 fifths. And the sine of y is also 3 fifths. So now we just have to do a little math. If you want to put it in your calculator, you can. Just exactly like this. Or I'm just going to do it by hand because it's a little faster. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. 3 times 3 is 9. And 5 times 5 is 25. 16 25ths plus 9 25ths. Well, 16 plus 9 is 25. 25ths, well, that's equal to 1. So there's our final answer. The sine of x plus y is equal to 1. And that's the end of that story. The next problem, we want, we are given that b is acute, which means it's in quadrant 1, because acute means less than 90, and if it's less than 90, it's a quadrant 1 angle. Okay, so the sine of b is 12 over 13. So let's get a quadrant 1 angle, call it b, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, if you do the Pythagorean theorem, you'll find the missing side is a 5. So they tell us the sine of B. It's 12 thirteenths. We are going to have to know what the cosine of B is. They don't tell us that, but cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 5 over 13. And now we're going to go up to the um, sine of A minus B. A is 90 and B is B. So the sine of a minus b from this formula is the sine of 90 times the cosine of b minus the cosine of 90 times the sine of b. That's right from the formula above. Well, the sine of 90, I know that's 1. The cosine of b, I figured that out down here. The cosine of b is 5 over 13. The cosine of 90 is equal to 0, and the sine of b is equal to 12 thirteenths. That was given to us. So 1 times 5 thirteenths is 5 thirteenths. 0 times anything is 0, so our final answer is 5 thirteenths, and that's the end of that story. The sine of 90 minus b. Our last example is we are given the sine of x. And we also have another acute angle, so that is in quadrant 1. Lucky for us, quadrant 1 is nice because we don't have to worry about negatives. So now we're going to find out what the cosine of a plus b is. We're going to use this formula over here, cosine of a plus b. So a will be x and b will be 180. So the cosine of x plus 180 is equal to the cosine of x times the cosine of 180 minus the sine of x times the sine of 180 from the formula. Well, we know the sine of x is 3 fifths. That goes there. But we, what we don't know is what the cosine of x is. So x is in quadrant 1. So we'll draw a little triangle down here in quadrant 1. We'll label him x. And the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the missing side is 4. So they tell us the sine of x is 3 fifths, and we could figure out that the cosine of x is adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 fifths. So now it's just a matter of substituting in. The cosine of x is just 4 fifths, not the cosine of 4 fifths. Not the cosine of 4 fifths, just 4 fifths. The cosine of 180 is negative 1. The sine of x? They told us it was 3 fifths, and the sine of 180 is equal to 0. So what we have is 4 fifths times negative 1, which is negative 4 fifths, minus 0, which is negative 4 fifths. And that's the end of that story. And that's the end of my story for today. So have a good night, and we'll work on these tomorrow.